Take a look at this giant garnet crystal. Can you see its growth rings? Let's go into the laboratory to see how we can read the history locked inside. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Hi guys, my name is Eric and this is the rock of the day. One thing that I notice about this rock is it looks like there's some sort of ruby or some purplish rock on the inside with a shell of probably dirt. I also notice on this side, it looks like rings, like a sedimentary, like kind of like rings on a tree. Ethan, can you tell me about this rock? Thank you, Eric, for introducing this rock to everyone. Eric noticed a lot of interesting things in here. He pointed out that purpley color inside, and he noticed these lines, or rings as he called them, kind of like the rings of a tree. Have you ever seen tree rings before? When you cut a tree like this, you can see that it has grown in a series of rings. The oldest part is right here in the middle, and each ring around that is another year in the life of the tree. Now, this one probably grew over 50 years or so, and these rings are kind of like a history book, just waiting to be read. Now, our sample has the same kind of growth rings, doesn't it? Except this didn't grow at the Earth's surface. It grew deep down in the Earth, where it was squeezed and cooked to make this mineral grow. That's because this is a huge crystal of garnet. And if you saw episode 22, you know that garnet is my favorite mineral. Now, we found this one on an expedition in the Italian Alps, already cracked in half, so you can see the growth rings inside. Let's put this on my rock spinner. And I have one other question for you. How long do you think it took this thing to grow? To answer that, we will need to use geo chemistry. And in this episode, we get to visit our laboratory here at Boston College to learn how. Now, the director of our lab knows more than anyone else about all the things we do in our laboratory. She can show us all of the steps to unlock the story inside this garnet. Oh, and the lab's a very busy place, so don't be surprised if you meet a bunch of other scientists who are working on their own stories. Let's go. Hey, hey, Steph. Hey, Ethan. How's it going? <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks yeah, for yeah. joining us. Of course. Everybody, I'm with Steph Walker. Steph is the director of the Center for Isotope Geochemistry here at Boston College. And Steph, you oversee the entire isotope geochemistry operation in our department and here at this university. I wanted to bring our viewers here to help understand how we extract the full story out of a rock like this beauty here. Can you show us how we can attack a rock like this? Absolutely. Let's go. All right. Thanks. Step one, cut the garnet in half so it's flat, just like that tree. So first things first, we have to cut a slice of this rock to get a flat surface so that we can then take it over to the laser. Hey, Kira. How are you How you doing? I'm good. This is one of my PC students, Kira. This is one of the rocks for your thesis, right? It is, actually. Yeah. What are you studying here? Yeah, so not only am I really interested in the age of this rock, but I'm also interested in the fluid history, like the water that was transported through this rock. It's really interesting because it, it travels deep into the earth, like 100 kilometers or more even. Very cool. That is obviously something else. What's that rock you're working on? It has these smaller garnets in it, which I'm about to saw to get ready for the laser. Would you like to see? Oh yeah, let's do the saw right now. Okay. So Steph, where do we go now? Next is a super cool bit. We're going to the laser. The laser! Oh yeah! All right, so Steph, what got you interested in the geosciences in the first place? Well, it was actually a, an accidental scheduling problem. Oh, an accident. Um, so when I was doing my A-levels in high school, high school, yeah. Um, I wanted to do chemistry and philosophy, but they clashed. Okay. So my chemistry teacher decided to sign me up to do geology. Okay. Um, and I was really enthralled from the first lecture because we went outside in the field yeah and I thought wow this is really cool because I get to do all of the different sciences and not just focusing on one yeah. and focusing 
on the signs of the Earth, which is literally the thing that we're living on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's check out this lab. Yeah, let's go. Step two, make a map of the growth rings because they can be very hard to see. So after we've got the sample nice and flat after polishing it, um, we come in here and we yeah. try and create maps of chemical composition. And there's lots of ways that you can make a map, but today we're going to see our laser. And Andrew Lanero here is the assistant director of the Center for Isotope Geochemistry. Hello, Andrew. Andrew. Thanks for joining us. Uh, can you show us how we do this? Yeah, let me show you our laser. So this is our laser ablation system. So we can put the rock inside of this cell and hit it with a laser beam. The laser will bounce around and fire down directly onto the sample and blast out particles that we can then sweep over into our mass spectrometer. And this um, will collect the sample dust from the laser and shoot it into an argon plasma. And an argon plasma is very hot. It's about 10,000 degrees. It's hotter than the surface of the sun. Hotter than the surface of the sun? That's right. You guys, that's hot. And then Willie, Hi. you're about to laser something right now. What are you working on? Uh, this is a meteorite. Yeah. It was found in 2020 in the Sahara Desert, and it's older than the Earth. So we think this is how old, roughly? Four and a half billion years. And are you getting ready to do a laser spot? Yeah. Gonna, Can we do it? Yeah, let's do it. Can you see the hole? Yeah. Right there, that's that's the mineral we're analyzing. So you're blasting way right now into this four and a half billion year old meteorite. Yep. And this will allow you to make a map of your meteorite. Mm -hmm. And it's also how we make maps of samples like our big garnet. So Steph, what's the next step? So after we've got that, we can use that map to determine where we're going to drill the sample. Let's head up there. Yeah, let's go. Step three, drill out the growth rings, one ring at a time. So now we come into the mineral preparation lab. Yes. Which is where we basically separate out minerals that we're interested in. So yeah. um, we can do that in a couple of ways. The first way is by using the micro drill. Yeah, and that's what these guys are doing. Uh, Victor. Good to see you. Good Ethan. to see you, Victor. Remember this guy? Victor's from episode 50 of Every Rock Has a Story, and now you're back and you're working on a new project. What, what are you guys working on? So Kira and I have been working on some projects in the Himalaya. Yeah. So one of the places we're working in is this place called Naga Parbat, which is the fastest rising part of the Himalaya. That's so cool. And the other place you guys are working? The other place is Karakoram, okay. where we're studying the uplift of the Tibetan Plateau. But that's not what that is, right, Kira? What do you got mounted in no. there right now? This is actually Dora Meyer sample right yeah. here. So we have mounted up a slab of Dora Meyer, and as you can see, the core is drilled out here. All right, so that's how you drill out the core. And then after we've drilled out one of these growth rings of the garnet, then what happens? Then we have to crush it into a little sand and sieve it into different grain size fractions. All right. So Paige is Obviously. smashing away a little, little rock there. <laughs> that's what's happening here. Hey, Paige. How are you? And the sand still isn't pure garnet. So then we've got to try and separate out different minerals that we're interested in, in garnet in this case. Yeah. And we can do that using the France um, magnetic separator. Indeed. Which basically uses a big electromagnet to separate out minerals that are magnetic versus ones that aren't magnetic. And yeah. the ones that we're interested in garnet are magnetic. So. That's right. And John Mark here is working on, um, well, what samples are you working on right now? So I'm working on some samples from Vermont. And these are garnets that form when the water comes in contact with the mantle and forms serpentinite. That's right. Serpentine, one of the most important rocks on the planet. That's in episode 10, you guys. So all we need to do is load it into the magnetic separator and uh, and then it'll be good to go. So the, the little crushed up rock goes in there and this electromagnet will pull the garnets up to the high side. The non-magnetic things go down here. We can separate out those clean garnets. What's the next step? Then we head into the clean lab. Step four, dissolve the garnet in strong acid. So now we're gonna come into the clean lab, yeah. which is where we want to dissolve the rocks and separate out the elements that we're interested in measuring. The air in here is 10,000 times cleaner than it is outside, and we gotta wear these uh, suits before we go in, right? Yeah, because we don't want any contamination, but also we wanna make sure that we're safe. That's right, because we'll be using some strong acids. That's right, yep. So let's get suited up and we'll head on in. Yeah, let's go. We've done with the mineral separation, we bring them into here, which is the clean lab. Yeah. Two things that we do in here. The first thing is cleaning all of the, the Teflon, so the, basically doing the dishes of the, of the clean lab. And that's basically what um, 
Lizzie is doing it. Hi, Lizzie. Yeah. Thanks for cleaning all the Teflon. But we're using Teflon beakers because if we use glass, it would dissolve in the acids that yeah. we use. So then we weigh the samples and we use these balances, yep. and that is what Brooke's doing. What are you weighing, Brooke? It's our samples from the weights of all the Awesome. All right. Nicole, what are you working on here? So I've got some archaeological samples from sheep and goat, um, and I am just pulling off some tooth enamel to determine their mobility. So when we've weighed the samples, we have to come bring them into the Ultra Clean Lab to get them dissolved. This is the Ultra Clean Lab. Ultra Clean Lab, yeah. I love this place, all right. Yeah. So we got to dissolve the rocks first. And actually, that looks like what Dylan's doing at the moment. Dylan, what are you working on right now? I'm working on some gardens from India. They're from some of the oldest rocks on the planet. They're three and a half billion years old. We're using them to study how the first continents were formed on Earth. Three and a half billion year old garnets being dissolved right here. And what kind of acids are we using to dissolve? So we're actually stuff? using really dangerous acids, really strong acids. So things like hydrofluoric acid, hydrochloric acid, and hydro, uh, nitric acid. So that's why we have to wear all this safety gear because it's really dangerous and we exactly. want to be safe when we're in the lab. Goggles, gloves, all this stuff. That's right. Step five. Isolate the specific ingredients we will need to figure out how old that garnet is. All right, after we dissolve a rock. So after we've done that, we have to take a really small aliquot of the sample. An aliquot, that's like just a little a really bit of it. A really small bit of it, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, and what? So then we want to isolate the elements that we're interested in measuring. So whether that's neodymium, lead, strontium, we've got to do that using a, a method called column chromatography. Okay. Um, and actually it looks like um, Kira and Adrian are doing that at the moment, so let's go check them out. Yeah, in fact, <laughs> Hey you guys, Adrian, hey, it's great going? to see you. Everybody, yeah. this is Adrian from episode 59. Remember him? He's back working in our lab. So Steph, what are they working on here? So it looks like they're doing the first stage of um, column chemistry. So it's the first of three columns that they use to get the neodymium out of the garnets that they've dissolved those little, those little beakers. You gotta load the dissolved garnet in the top and wait for it to drip slowly through the column. And what comes out the bottom is just a tiny dot of that ingredient called neodymium that we need to isolate. Then we need to take the little dot of neodymium that's in the bottom of the beaker and load that onto a filament to put it into the mass spectrometer. All right, we gotta go see that. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. All Thanks, right. you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Dylan. Hi, Izzy. Hello. So, what are you working on right now? So, I am working on artists marrying New York City rocks, that's what we had yeah. in episode 59, Adrian, yeah, that's great. And Izzy, you're one of Adrian's students at Wellesley College, right? Yeah. Awesome to have you. So Steph, talk us through this. Yeah, so basically Izzy has been waiting for me to show her how to load the samples onto the filaments. Okay. So that's what we're gonna do now. Got it. Yeah. Have you had any coffee this morning? No. Okay, well that's good, because otherwise you'd be shaky. Yeah. onto the filament like that. And then you wait for it to dry down. Step six, analyze the ingredients on our mass spectrometer. Okay, so everything that we've done so far has led up to this moment. We're gonna finally load our samples onto the thermal ionization mass spectrometers, and we're gonna try and get the chemical information to tell us about the age of this rock. That's right, so all the information that we need is gonna come from these gizmos called mass spectrometers. And Dylan is here, what are you working on right now? Here I'm working on some samples from Lake Seminole in southern Georgia to study how humans impact sediment coming into a reservoir. So this is amazing, we've seen every step of the process from cutting up the rock, making a laser map, doing the clean room chemistry, and now finally working here on the TIMS. Steph, it's been so great having you in this episode. It's been a pleasure. It's been really fun. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing this lab with so many people out there. We'll see you guys back in the studio. So what did you think of that? Every time I set foot in our lab, I'm reminded of how exciting a place it can be, especially when it's buzzing with the energy of science. Now, I'd like to welcome Eric into the studio. Hi, Eric. So Eric, what did you think of that story? I think it was really cool, especially how we're trying to find um, the age of the rock. Yep, that's what we call geochronology, studying time in the Earth. It's a big part of what we do in our lab, and we talked about it more in episode 33. From all of that, have we pulled out how old it, each ring and how old it is? 
Aha, yes, so my student Kira is still working on that exact question, but based on the work we've done so far, it looks like the garnet grew from about 40 million years to 34 million years ago. That means it's a six million year history book straight from the deep earth. Are you surprised by that? Yeah, one like short extension question is like I'd love to see a rock grow. Like how does it grow? Does it have like roots? Like where does it grow from? Oh, Eric, I love the way you're thinking. So minerals like this garnet don't have roots like a tree, but they do need to get their ingredients from someplace. So this garnet grew in a metamorphic rock, deep in the earth, over 100 kilometers deep. And it grew from ingredients that existed in other minerals that got dragged down there. It's kind of like baking a cake. If you put in the right ingredients, then set the oven to the right temperature, and in our case, the right squeezing pressure, then those ingredients will transform into something new, like our garnet. Sometimes we can even cook up our own rocks in the lab. Check out episode 63 to see how we do that. Eric, thanks again for being part of this episode. Goodbye. Working in a laboratory can be a lot of fun. It's also challenging and sometimes frustrating work. That's why having a supportive group of people around you is so important. You met lots of other people using geochemistry to unlock their own stories, using samples like garnets, meteorites, animal teeth, lake bottom sediments, and even a rock from New York City. A laboratory can be a place where people and ideas come together. A place where we can share our successes and our failures, our ideas and our concerns, and our unique perspectives with each other. As director of our lab, Steph plays the leading role in supporting all of our lab members in their work, but she doesn't do it alone. I always like to say that laboratory science is a great way to make friends. And science is always best when you can do it with your friends. I want to thank Steph and everybody else for sharing our lab with you today. And I want to thank Eric for all his observations that got us thinking. Maybe you will get to work in a laboratory someday. I wonder who you will meet there. See you next time. Bye-bye. So this is the microdule right here, and this guy, Victor. <laughs> you gotta retake that. <laughs> this is to the game. I went for the high I know, and I came in low. Yeah, it's a good blooper. So now we want to come into the clean lab. Yes. Which is where we do two main things. We dissolve the rocks, and we separate out the elements that we're interested in measuring. Hotter than the surface of the sun? That's right. You guys, that's hot.